Hi guys, I want to talk about normative political theory. Normative political theory. Um, as we go through this course called social and political theory, I think one of the um, quite um, sometimes confusing and vague topics is um, normative political theory. And um, I want to see how best I can demystify it um, for you to understand so that when you sit in a lecture room when you read the handouts that will be given they will be able to be quite straightforward and you'll be able to make sense um, um, from the readings that you may do generally when we talk about normative political theory uh, we are also referring to that theory that is that is called the historicist approach to the study of uh, political science it was originated by scholars like Immanuel Kant, Hegel, um, Hazel, um, um, Baca, um, Berlin, among a host of other serious um, classical political thinkers. It is basically explained in terms of all political theorizing of recommendatory nature. So I am talking about all political theorizing that recommends and um, is concerned with what ought to be. It is also concerned with the study of norms and values, some rules of the games, and then also, um, like I said, what ought to be um, in sharp contrast, contrast with um, what is or facts. It finds more expressions in abstract, exp abstract reasoning and abstract thinking or abstract conceptualization always talking about what ought to be what ought to be what are the moral values what are the rules of the games that must serve as the norms to regulate the conduct of of politics and that is about normative political theory now those who subscribe to normative political theory uh, believe or argue that it is always difficult for us to separate values or norms from facts. They are saying that it is always difficult for us to be, um, separate what ought to be from what is. What is actually makes sense if it is used within the context of what ought to be. And so, those who subscribe to the tenets of this theory have always argued that values cannot be separated from facts and that truth is not absolute but rather subjective or perspectiva. Truth is always not absolute but it is subjective or perspectiva. And so to be able to appreciate an absolute truth the theorists or normative thinkers say you must do what we call intersubjective relations, intersubjective relations. And the idea of intersubjective relations simply argues that because truth is perspectival, let everybody tell the truth, give a narration of the truth from their own perspective, from their own perspective, so that the absolute truth becomes an amalgamation or the coming together of the various truths told from the different perspectives that is what they refer to as intersubjective relations so as you look at me um you see things behind me if i tell you to describe me maybe you describe me and the things you see behind me if you tell me to describe the room or the office where i'm certain to engage you i can also describe the office from my perspective so what I see is not what you see. And what you see may not be what I see. So to bring an absolute description of this room, we have to do what the normative thinkers refer to as intersubjective relations. And that means me bringing about what I see from my perspective and you bringing about what you see from your perspective and putting these perspectival truths together to form what is referred to as um, the absolute truth. So they argue that um, um, absolute truth cannot 
um, exist unless we do inter um, inter subjective relations. And then also they argue that it is always difficult to separate values from facts. It's always difficult to separate um, what ought to be from what is, and that to tell to be able to tell the absolute truth about what is, you must bring the various perspectives, you know, um, together. Now, um, normative thinkers have been championed by many scholars, as I mentioned, but I will talk about the views of about two um, of uh, these scholars. So there is a scholar like um, Enes Baka, there's a scholar like Enes Baka, um, who believes that when you talk about normative political thinking or normative political theorizing, he um, essentially it should be a, a, a certain branch of moral, moral philosophy that concerns itself with the ends of purpose, the ends of the state and the purposes of the state and the means for achieving these ends and objectives of the state. So, as a state, what what is supposed to be the end of the state, the objective of the state? And what are the kinds of things that must be done to achieve these ends of the state? What ought to be the end of the state? And what ought to be the kinds of things that must be done by the state itself and by the individual in the state to achieve the ends of the state? Now, Baca goes on to argue that there are certain fundamental questions of political theory that have remained since time immemorial and would forever remain in human society. He believes that these uh, fundamental questions include why the state exists, the purposes and ends of the state, and the appropriate means for achieving the purposes of the ends of the state. Now, he argues that if these are the central questions of political theory, then it may be quite derogatory for one to say that political theory is always about um, abstract thinking and it's always about historical processes. He, however, does not downplay the role and effect or impact of history um, in the study of, of, of uh, political theory. He believes that um, for any theory to be grounded and for any theory to be actually valid, it must first be grounded in some historical experiences without being necessarily submerged by it. And such a theory must therefore have the experience of the past and present before it can predict or prescribe um, what ought to be. So, um, he back up goes on to say that political theory determines the ends and ultimate values that govern the life of a society. And it also unearths the congruous means for the attainment of the political ends and values of society. Um, he goes on to say again that political ends is differently emphasized depending on the time. The ends of the state varies. Okay, depending on the time. So the end of a state may be, for, for instance, during the era of the um, Provisional National Defense Council, PNDC era in Ghana, the end of the state was revolutionary justice. Revolutionary justice where people were arrested, paraded on the street and they were beaten and all manner of killings went on. That was the end of the state around the time. But the end of the state now in Ghana is democracy, rule of law, freedom, and all that. So the ends of the state, according to um, Baka, varies. The virus, given time. Okay? A state may, end, uh, may focus on a particular end today, but tomorrow it may be different. Then you have another scholar who believes in normative political theorizing. He's called... Isaac Berlin. Uh, Isaac Berlin also argues that normative political theorizing involves the discovery of and the application of a certain moral notion in the area of political relations. So Berlin believes that normative political theory, like Bakker, is also a branch of moral philosophy which 
um, to him comprises the basic and elementary moral propositions that impact political life. The basic and elementary moral propositions that must always be present to shape how the life of a politician or how the conduct of politics uh, must be done. He postulates further that normative political theorizing finds expression in detailed understanding of institutions and policies. Normative political thinking find expressions in detailed understanding and policies in their operational forms. Please take note of this. Normative political thinking finds expression in detailed understanding of institutions. You can say, so as they try to understand how institutions work, they understand the working of the, of the of institutions in their operational forms. I, I, I'm underlining the fact that institutions are studied in the operational forms because later in this lecture, we'll talk about, we'll examine normative political theory and to see whether they actually deal with only what ought to be. Because as they study institutions, they study institutions in the operational forms before they are able to prescribe how the institutions ought to operate. If they study institutions in the operational forms and they are able to understand deficiencies, then they are also able to prescribe how the institutions ought to function to deal with the deficiencies that may have been um, on earth. So the theory, according to um, Berlin, goes beyond such institutions and policies to discover whether they are being used to serve the interest of the citizens of the state. So for them, normative political theory also construct moral principles that ought to guide political practice while in more concrete application to investigate the implications of such moral principles for actual political practice, thereby bringing a certain intellectual touch to the way the game of politics would have to be conducted. Very important. Can I continue? Yeah, 